All right, g'day there. Richard Musgrave Evans here again, and welcome back. Now today, I'm back in the studio, and I've just gotten back from one of my favourite places in the whole wide world, the Flinders Ranges, out back South Australia. Beautiful stuff, so, of course, with plenty of inspiration, very, very fresh in my mind, and a few video footages, which I'll shoot through the uh, video, you can get to see it, through the video as I'm painting. I'll play a bit of that. Got the footage. Ready to go, got a composition in my head, got plenty of paint, massive palette knives, working with Viridian Green, Permanent Magenta, Ultramarine Blue, Burnt Sienna, Alizarin Crimson, Yellow Ochre, Titanium White, and Cad Orange, and probably a little bit of Cad Yellow too. All right, pretty excited, let's get into it. Okay, now we're gonna go for the biggest differences between having nothing at all, getting it done as quick as I can, okay. Okay, now just get uh, this little bit of paint off. Got some white paint on there. Just get a bit of that off. Now I'm just gonna use the knife today, nothing else, just the knife. Just gonna get a little bit of that blue and a little bit of white, just so I've got a nice light blue color. And I'll work out what I want. Okay, now. Right, this is very important, all this, where it goes. In my head, what am I doing? These marks make all the difference. Whatever you do now, going to be a lot of what's going on so got to get it right all right so just feeling a few marks to get the composition going Alright, so I've just got a few marks put in and now we're all ready to go. Okay, what I might do is straight away just get a bit of. I've got the ultramarine blue, I'm just going to grab a little bit of cobalt blue as well for some of the other parts of the sky down lower. Just drop that back over there for me. Alright, so let's just get some pure white and that. Cobalt Blue, if that's what I said earlier, that's the right name, Cobalt Blue. Alright, and now we'll darken her off plenty, a little bit of white. Now I'm just going to alter this a little. Alright. I'm just picking out, the tops of those hills went exactly where I want them, so I'm getting rid of them, making it more where I want it now. That's why the blue sky is going in first. I just start with whatever I feel needs the most urgent attention. And at the moment, because I wanted to move those hills a little bit, that was the first thing that was done. Okay, so let's just get that color in. Off to the edge there. Got that. Let's go a bit darker. Let's go for some deep ultramarine blue now. Titanium white. Plenty of that ultramarine blue. It's good stuff. Real big chunky putty paint. Fantastic stuff. Just go a little bit darker than that. So I'll add a little bit more blue so there's a little bit less white in the mix. Alright, here we go. Pump that on. I just mix it a little bit more. It just needs a little bit more of a mixture. Right. Let's get that on. Let's 
going on nicely. Beautiful stuff. Deep blue, rich paint, lovely stuff. Look at that. Random marks. Get a bit of a blend going there. Blend those two sky colours together. Yes, yes. Now, I'll go up a layer, so I've got more of that beautiful ultramarine blue. Put it with that other mix of white and blue. Give it plenty of a mixture, mix it all in. Lovely stuff, good workout. All right, so we've got a very deep blue sky today. Blue indeed. Yummy, juicy, thick paint. Buttery, real buttery quality. Alright. Let's just go up another layer, a bit more of that darker blue, ultramarine blue. This time I'm going to throw a little bit of magenta in, which will just send it slightly red as it's gone further up. So it's gone a darker colour. Darker value and slightly red. That is as deep, as deep as midnight. Let's get all that paint on. Lovely stuff. I really enjoy painting the Flinders Ranges. It happens to be one of my favourite subjects. It's just got a magic all of its own that place. Okay, here we go. That's nice and deep. Right, I can't get some of that paint off I need. Go for a little bit of paper towel. The paper towel to try and get some of this beautiful gunk off. That's one of the bonuses of using a pellet knife. It's very easily, you've got a clean knife. All right, so next, we'll throw in a few of the darker tones. So we'll go for, whoops, there we go, alizarin crimson, which is a beautiful red. I'll mix it with a bit of viridian green together. Because they're the opposite on the color wheel, the red and green will go a really dark tone. That way I can stick in some of my darkest tones. I like to throw a lot of warm color in those shadows at first. A lot of it gets covered, but not all of it. So, well, you can pull back to it once you've got a new layer over the top. You can pull back to it and you get these beautiful, let's just put a bit in there, get these beautiful undertones of reds and who knows what. Right, so that's good. Now we just get a bit of magenta with that sky blue. That's a beautiful deep color. I might just mix in a Colour just here. A bit more of that ultramarine and magenta. Stick that down low. Give some of the sh shadow tones. Some of the shadow tones on the foliage and the ground and so. Alright, now a few more of those dark tones. Let's just work out what we're going to do here. This right. I'll stand back for a minute and have a look. It's all good. Now I might go a bit of these more foliage colours. So we'll go for a Viridian Green, some Yellow Oak, a bit of Burnt Sienna maybe. Mix up a little bit of a brew there. Just going to paint the shadow tones in. How hot I want that. Here like that. Lightly pull them over. Like so. Just in here. 
and a bit up there, a little bit wherever. It's close on it, yeah, close on it. Just get some of that white. Bung it down here, burnt sienna. I'm just going to mix up a bit of a sky colour, so a bit of a cloud sky colour now. So I've got burnt siennas, I've got those sky blues that were already there. Just mixing them all together, it's a chunky paint. Here's a chunky knife for that stuff. A little bit more of the magenta thrown in. So you've got the sky blue and burnt sienna. Maybe a tad more magenta thrown in. Let's just have a look. A bit more of that sky blue dragged across. Just trying to work out a bulk colour for the cloud. Put some of that in. A bit more white, I've got a little bit lighter tone. A little bit more of the sky blue. And immediately I can see I'm running out of white, so. White gets used a heck of a lot in the landscape. Let's just get that paint on. Work out where we're going here, let's go. Working out a bit of the draftsmanship of those, some of those hills. Let's get those colours on. Put some of that in. Yeah, right, let's go a little bit more magenta at the top. Yeah, and a little bit more of the brown, so I've got more of a burnt sienna and magenta mixed with that blue. I need to go a slightly darker tonal value, so I'll just add a little bit more of the blues and everything just to darken the tonal value off. Too, I reckon. Also take it up this way a bit. A bit more red in the mix. More white. Getting there, getting there. I'll put a bit of white. Just feeling it as I go. What we got here? Mix some of that together. Across. All right, stand back and have a look, eh? Oh, good. Gonna go a little bit higher with the cloud formation up this way. Let's get some of that across there. Fix it in. That's the fun with the wheel paint. It's quite easy to get the compositions to change like that. Let's just go that way. Mix it all that in, getting plenty of variety of subtle colours in here. Just get the knife going all different ways. Beautiful little broken colour throughout the painting. A little bit more of those lighter tones up here for now. Just a little bit so I can get an idea on what the cuffs I'm actually doing here. Here we go. Drop a little bit here and there. I can feel it right, that's through there. Yep, 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 yep. Just feeling the composition for a minute. Yep, 
Now I'll go. Now I'm going to go for. Now I'm going to go for. I've got a lot of the sky tones in, just blocked in, mind you. Let's just move some of that green out of the way so I've got more room to work. Now we'll go for the earth tones itself. All right, what are we going to play with today? We'll go a bit of burnt here. We're going to go plenty of white, obviously. There's going to be a lot of white. But there's going to be rich colours. We'll try a bit of that cad with the burnt sienna first. Burnt sienna. Cad orange is making a beautiful colour. A bit more of that orange. That really stings it up. It's a very, a very rich type of country. So, just going to feel some of this in. You know, vary it. So I'm going to throw a little bit of magenta off to the side here because there's a lot of variety in the colours of the ranges itself. So I'll make a light magenta mix there. Mix with a bit of burnt sienna so we get good variety. That's more of a slight chocolatey but at the same time has a magenta twang to it. Wearing a bit of paint, not surprising. <laughs> Let's just get some of these colours blocked in. Right, burnt, 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 burnt sienna, I can see. Maybe grey it slightly with a little bit of blue just to drop the saturation of the colour a little bit. Now the idea is to basically get the colours in. Like I said, there's a lot of variety, so some bits are going to be chocolatey. Some bits are going to be more of that high key orange. All right. A bit more of that high key orange here. Oh, that is a stinging colour. I've got plenty of it there. That'll be perfect for what I want to do here. Down and in. Now the Flinders Ranges itself is an ancient seabed laid down sediments from the ancient seabed. It used to be an underground sea. So you've got all these layers over millions of years that are built up. And then what happens is, millions of years later, the whole of the earth's upheaved and it's upheaved on an angle, it's so like a 45 degree angle, somewhere in that mix. And then it's eroded, and all the erosion has left all the different layers of the ancient seabed. And so then you get that's why you get all these different colours. Some will be chocolate, some will be ochres, some will be magentas. They're beautiful colours. And so it's like nature's bones are laid bare in the Flinders Ranges because it's a very arid type of environment. And you get the beautiful structure of the earth. Fantastic. I'll stand back and have a look what I'm doing. I just go for a smaller knife for a minute, it's still a pretty big knife, but you know, just want to pick out that draftsmanship. Like I said, all these different colours and tones, I'm just going to go for slightly brighter here, so I've got cads and white, maybe a bit of yellow ochre. I just want to put up this hill here. and the tone with white and orange. Lay that on, all right. Now, yeah, we're going right, so we'll just keep going with this colour. Some burnt sienna, cat orange. Keep jutting those colours in. Now I'm going to go for some mix over here, a bit more yellow ochre and white, separate. Lighter tone, beautiful ochre colours, get plenty of white in there. Right, where are we? Where are we? Just... Yeah, I'm just going to put the light tone in there. Then, I'm going to mix up some magenta and white, separate. Gentle and white. Like 
be some of those beautiful tones down in here, those beautiful pinky earthy colours. Great stuff. Stick them in with the ochres half mix. Get the ochres again. Throwing the paint in, nice and chunky style. Really. And see a less white now, a slightly darker tone, a bit more chocolatey here. Some chocolate effects going. Lovely stuff. I'll stand back for a minute. Okay, that's all lovely. Let's just move this to the bin run. Getting plenty of stuff to play with here now. Let's just go white and ochres again, real light tone, get it light. A little bit of those greys mixed in. I'm just gonna, this is a creek bed here. Creek bed here will be all different coloured rocks, but a lot of bleached out stuff. Let's get it all in. Beautiful layers of colours, mix all that stuff in and throw it all in. There we go. Tons of paint. We'll go straight across for now, but then we'll Make more random marks as we go. Get a good coverage. Try and keep that away from the camera if I can. All right. Now. Let's get some of those colors in the corner. Your beautiful magentas and whatever else. Break up the color. A lot of variety in the creek because it's all rocky and chunky, so I'll use the pellet knife to that effect. All right, let's have a look what we got. A bit of that. A bit more of the oranges and the browns. Mixed here. It's all crazy. Go, go, go. That's all well and good. Now, I've got some darker tones there of the foliage. Let's just throw some lighter tones in. So we'll go yellow ochre and viridian green. We'll still go a bit of burnt sienna, but what we're trying to paint now is the light source on the gum trees instead of the shadow source. I'll just lighten the tone a bit with a bit of these colors. A bit more white thrown in, so you've got a lighter tone. Let's have a look what we got. Yeah, that's just needs a bit more of the ochres and a little bit less of the white. I'll even drop a tiny bit of orange in there just to make it pop. And we'll just have a look. I reckon I'm gonna need more of that yellow and viridian green. Burnt sienna. Yellow ochre, viridian green. Up a wonderful brew there. Now, that's it, that's the one I was after. Just lay some of them on. Just lightly putting them on, and but very chunky, but very lightly dancing across the surface. Vary the tone slightly here, slightly more gray. Quite often you get that kind of gray green in the outback with the foliage. It's type of an arid type of color. So I've got all sorts of variety going on with the colours. Bit of greenery maybe down lower in the creek here. Let's put that in. A bit more viridian green in places, just a lot of variety like I said in the colours. Different bushes here and there, laying on the hills. Colours in nicely, there we go. Make some in there, alright, let's have a look. Mm 
All right, I'll just get this knife and I'll ever so lightly pull through and that's revealing some of those undertones because I've stuck different layers on a little bit. By pulling through, you're starting to reveal some of those undertones. Smearing the paint together, those palette knives, lovely smear marks. Broken colour. The knife lends itself beautifully to painting painting this ancient seabed on because it's all chunk chunk chunk. Okay. That one can go near like so. That one like so. Pull through a little like I said. Melt the marks together a little. Like so. All these foliage colours are here, but I may just soften them a bit with the knife. So I'll just grab the knife, clean the knife, and just pull through. Wipe the knife clean. Just helps to smear the tones together a little. Just makes them read better against each other, more subtle. Subtle feeling. Lightly touchy in there. It's all a matter of feel. Let's just get some of that. If I were to draw them back in here. Play a little bit on the hills. A little bit up on the ridge top. See trees chuffing around up there. Yeah, that beautiful white, white of tones. Makes in all the subtle, warm, cool contrast. Just mix up with some pure white. Now I've got a bit of cad yellow as well as the orange there. Just mix up some really light tones. Really light indeed there. So it's white, cad yellow, cad orange. Just want to stick just a couple of highlight trunks here and there. Building up some refinement, some detail on top of the crazy marks. We'll just go on knife on edge where we feel like we need to. A little bit here and there. Just the illusion, you don't want to overdo it, just enough to create the illusion that something may be going on. Yeah, let's have a look at that. Okay, so we're really starting to get there now. She's really winding in and uh, 
It's all about, we've got the big bulk of the colours in, and it was, as I said, it was about getting them all in position then. And then after that, starting to build up a bit of energy where you feel like you need to. So I'm getting some highlight colours to get things to start to pop a little. Because you just need to build up a few accent points to make the picture jump out. And so that involves a lot of a lot of looking and not too much putting in. Alright, let's have another look then. Plenty, plenty to do, but it's pretty much done, which is good. All good fun though, I really enjoyed being out there yesterday. Oh, it's just only yesterday I was out there. Very fresh in my head. I just wanted to come straight home and paint this picture. And so, before the memory faded, I wanted to really just get into it. So that's what I've gone and done. All right, well, here we are. I decided to move it into the other studio, as I do quite often. When I'm painting not on site, when I'm painting inside the studio, I prefer to quite often mix up the different studios. That way I can see it fresh. Because if I'm looking at a painting in one particular studio with one particular lighting condition, I find that if I feel like I've done enough, I'm not quite sure what else to do. I find if I move into the other studio, I literally see it in another light. And that's what's happened here. As soon as I moved it into here, bang, I saw it freshly and I thought, right, there's a few extra things I want to do just to really reel the painting in. Okay, so what I did was I decided to really make the keynote of these hills here. I really picked out the high key orange against the blue sky and improved the draftsmanship, improved the drawing, the draftsmanship. Also, I felt like I wanted a little bit more option to put a depth in the painting. And so, Originally when I painted the sky, I started off as sort of medium colour blue here and got slowly darker at the top. And that's great, but I felt like I wanted more distance as it receded off this way. So what I did is I used some of the cobalt blue and a bit of the yellow ochre to get those beautiful ochre green blues that you get down in the lower sky. And what that's done is it's given that real contrast between the dark down to the ochre sky, give that real depth out that way. And in saying that, I've gotten more depth in the sky also, I decided to play up in between the trees. I played up a little more on the distant hills because the Flinders Ranges is really known for that repetitious kind of repetition with variation theme where the ancient seabed has come up on the angle. And then these hills jut off and they can go off for kilometres like that. And so I thought, right, we've got them going here. Let's just emphasise a little bit more and use the distant colours. So over here, I've got more of the magentas the paler blues in the shadows to set it back and then right behind the trees it's drifted right off with the cool colours. So now I feel like the painting has got the original energy and uh, structure that I wanted but at the same time it's got a lot more depth and a lot more variety so there's a lot more interest, holds your interest longer. All right well I'm pretty happy with what's going on now so we've got the major block in first and then these it's quite abstract up close but I've got the illusion of detail to give you realism, so when you get back it's real. It's definitely about paying up close, this one. And, uh, but these refining marks, like a few twigs on a tree here and there, a few little lines of trunks, a few little trees just on the ridge where your eye meets a contra a, you know, two different contrasts, put a bit of detail on there, it really sets it off and really makes your mind feel like that the whole painting's finished. And yet up close, it's a celebration of paint and texture. All right, well, in saying all that, let's get the camera off, get right up close, have a buzz around and check out all the technique. All right, well, thanks again for watching and we'll catch you later.